October 30th. Our lamps are gone out. Matthew 25, 8. There are two periods of awful solemnity, which will be found utterly to extinguish the mere lamp of a Christian profession. Will you follow me, reader, to the dying bed of a false professor? It is an awful place. It is an affecting spectacle. No hope of glory sheds its brightness around his pillow. There is no anchor within the veil to which the soul now clings in its retchings from the body. No divine voice whispers in cheering, soothing accents, Fear not, for I am with you. No light is thrown in upon the dark valley as its gate opens and the spirit enters. Coldness is on his brow. Earth recedes. Eternity nears. The vault damps extend and thicken around the parting spirit, and the last wail of despair breaks from the quivering lip. My lamp is going out. And so will it be when the Son of Man comes. The great event will fix unchangeably the destiny of each individual of the human race. It will break like the loud artillery of heaven upon a slumbering church and a careless world. It will find the true saints with oil in their vessels with their lamps, though in an unwatchful state. It will come upon the nominal professor, grasping firmly his lamp of profession, but utterly destitute of the oil of grace, and in a state of as little expectation of as preparedness for the event of the Lord. And it will overtake and surprise the ungodly world as the flood did in the days of Noah, and the fire in the days of Lot. They were eating and drinking, Marrying and giving in marriage. They bought. They sold. They planted. They built. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And unto the same day that Lot went out of Sodom. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. The true saints will arise from their slumber. The spirit of slothfulness and lethargy into which they had fallen. And trimming their lamps by a fresh exercise of faith in Jesus will go forth as the children of the light to welcome their approaching Lord. False professors, too, startled by the cry which breaks upon the awful stillness of midnight, solemn as the archangel's trumpet, will eagerly feel for their lamps. Their evidences of acceptance based upon an outward profession of the gospel, when lo, to their surprise and consternation, they find themselves destitute of one drop of oil with which to feed the flickering, waning flame. They exclaim in despair, Our lamps are going out. And now the intellectual light goes out, and the moral light goes out, and the professing light goes out, and the official light goes out. And while they have fled to human sources to procure the grace they needed, their backs being thus turned upon Christ, the bridegroom comes, and those who are ready go in with him to the marriage, and the door is shut. They return with what they suppose the needed evidences, but now they learn, oh, that they should have learned it too late, that to have had a professing name to live, to have outwardly put on Christ by baptism, to have united externally with the Church of God, to have partaken of the Lord's Supper, to have promoted His truth and to have furthered His cause, to have preached His gospel, and even to have won converts to the faith, will avail nothing. Alone and apart from union to Jesus by the Spirit and obtaining admittance to the marriage supper of the Lamb, Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Fairly I say unto you, I know you not. In view of such a catastrophe, oh, how poor, contentable, and insignificant appears everything. However splendid in intellect, beautiful in morals, or costly in sacrifice, save the humble consciousness of having Christ in the heart of 